Okay, in this video, we're going to work through this linear programming problem where we're creating uh, uh, two different formulas um, through a variety of processes. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So a chemical company produces two products, formula A and formula B. Both require the same processes. One unit of formula A requires three hours in the first process and four hours in the second process. And then one unit of formula B requires five hours in the first, first process and two hours in the second process. The maximum available production time in each of these two processes is as followed. The first process is 60 hours. The second process is 70 hours. The production of formula B results in a byproduct uh, called formula BX. Uh, production of formula BX above 10 units is not desirable because of a limited market. The production of process, the production process of formula B yields four units of BX for each unit of formula B. The unit profit of formula A is $5 and of formula B is $10. The byproduct BX yields a $3 profit. However, if BX cannot be sold, it must be destroyed at a cost of $2 per unit. So let's go ahead and write out our decision variables. So our first decision variable is that we are going to uh, set a decision variable for the number of units of formula A that we create. So let's go ahead and just say, um, let A equal the number of units of formula A um, that is created. We can then write a problem here. We'll set a decision variable for formula B. So we'll just say, let B equal the number of units of formula B that is created. And we're told that we have another uh, instance here, and this is formula BX, which is a byproduct of formula B. So we're going to say, let BX equal um, the number of units of BX. And we're told that we have um, uh, an instance here where we have an opportunity to sell BX. So we're gonna say, let BX equal the number of units of BX that can be sold. And we can set another decision variable here to be um, let B Z equal the number of units of formula um, B X that must be destroyed. Okay, we should probably have here um, units of formula, um, formula BX. Um, that can be sold. Okay, so we have our four decision variables here. Now we can go ahead and write our objective function. So to the extent that the question asks us, what product is the production mix that will maximize profits? Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say max Z is equal to, well, we can sell uh, formula A for $5 per unit and unit B for $10 per unit. So we're going to say 5A plus 10B 
We can also sell the byproduct BX for $3. So plus three BX. But if we cannot sell BX, it must be destroyed at a cost of $2 per unit. So then we're going to say that it's going to be negative two BZ. Okay, and BZ represents the number of units of formula BX that must be destroyed. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and just map out what we have. So we can create um, formula A, formula B, And we have process one and process two. Make a little table here. And we're told that it takes three hours in the first process and four hours in the second process to create formula A. So three hours in the first process four hours in the second process. And then for formula B, it takes five hours in the first process and two hours in the second process. So five and two. So we have at least a little map here. Um, and now we can write our constraints. So we're gonna say constraints. We could also say subject two. Well, we have a constraint on the first process to the extent that the maximum available production time, and we're told that it's 60 hours for the first process. So let's say um, production time process one. Well, we're told that in process one, it takes three hours for formula A and five hours for formula B. So we're going to say three A plus five B must be less than or equal to 60 hours. Our production time Uh, for process two, well, in this case, we're looking at these variables right here. So we're gonna say 4A plus 2B must be less than or equal to, how many hours are we given here? We're gonna erase some of these just to keep our work clean here. We're told that we have no more than 70 hours for the second process. So less than or equal to 70. Importantly, we are also told something else in this question. And we're told that <clears throat> the production process for formula B yields four units of BX for each unit of formula B. Okay. So what we're going to write here is we're going to, so this is the, um, we're going to call this the byproduct. Byproduct relationship. And what we're going to say is that we know that 4B, well, let's say this instead of that. Let's say um, BX plus BZ is equal to 4B. Now, let's just hold on and walk through this. So we know that BX is equal to 
the number of units of formula BX that can be sold. Okay, we also know that BZ is equal to the number of units of formula BX that must be destroyed. So effectively what we're saying is we're saying that the number of units of BX, of formula units of BX in total is equal to the number of units that can be sold plus the number of units that must be destroyed. Okay, so that's where we get this left-hand side. And then we say it must be equal to 4B. Now, the obvious question is to say, well, hold on. We said that the production process of formula B yields four units of BX for each unit of formula B. Well, by writing it like this, effectively what we're saying is that for every unit of B that is created, we're going to create four times as many units of BX. So if we were to create five units of B, just as an illustrative example, so BX plus BZ, and we were to create five units of B, well, this would be is equal to four times five. So four times five is 20. So BX plus BZ is equal to 20. Now remember that BX and BZ is equal to the total number of BX such that it's equal to the number of units sold plus the number of units destroyed, right? So this is where BX plus BZ is equal to 4B. So we'll delete the rest of this. Just so it's there. And now we have two more constraints to add in here. We're told <clears throat> that the byproduct of BX, uh, we do not want more um, than 10 units. So no more than 10 units can be sold of the byproduct. So we're going to say um, limit on um, byproduct to be sold and where BX is equal to the number of units of formula BX that can be sold, we're going to say that BX is less than or equal to 10 units. And then finally, we have one last constraint here to put in and that's such that A is greater than or equal to zero, B is greater than or equal to zero, BX is greater than or equal to zero, and BZ is greater than or equal to zero. And that's it. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.